Welcome, welcome, welcome. Family, welcome to the lunchtime link up with your nephew Willie Mo Jr. I'm so excited about today's show because today I'm giving you the opportunity to hang out with a young man who literally became a millionaire at the age of 22. You know, December is the number one month for people to say, you know what, I'm going to do something different in my life. This is the month where most people decide that they're about to quit their job and they're about to be a full-time entrepreneur. But could there be an opportunity for you to step down, right, instead of stepping out? We're going to hear from the nine to five millionaire today. So family, make sure that you stick around. Of course, we'll be discussing the missingpeacemovie.com. Of course, we'll be discussing adoption. But more importantly, if you are an entrepreneur, this is the place you want to be. Because this young man is such an amazing guy. And he wrote a book. And he's hanging out with your nephew, Willie Moore Jr. What's up, bro? <laughs> the nine to five million there. What Let's floor? Go. What floor are you on right now? I'm in a man. I'm in a nightclub, bro. You was jamming at first. I was like downstairs, and then you started jamming. So I said, man, let me come up to the club, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so look to those of you all who are unfamiliar with my brother from another mother. He just wrote an awesome book. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. I've been over here bragging about you and your journey, but I gotta, I gotta get everybody just lit real quick. Turn up with your nephew. Catch me creeping like I want to see you get your energy up. You know, greater is he than living than you than he who's in the world. I want to show you to people who literally got out the mud and became a millionaire. Greater is he that lives in you. We're hanging out with the 95 million Jamal King. Chicago is in the building. Shot town in the house. What's up, brother? What's man, up, you man? Know what? Bro, it's been so long. You know, this pandemic kind of stopped us from going on the road and popping up on each other, man. But how's the family doing, bro? Man, the family is great, man. We are great. Like I said, we, and it's so crazy, man. Um, during this pandemic, everything that's been taking place, bro. I don't uh -huh. even remember another time that we've been this blessed, bro. Like, everything has been multiplied during this pandemic, man. So, you know, I don't know if it's the grace of God, if it's the fact that we invested so heavily in our faith, invested so heavily in our family, fitness, finances, and in our freedom beforehand. But whatever it is, bro, man, it's been, it's been, it's been something, man. It's been and something, then, If you're bro. just tuning in, it's my brother Jamal King, 9 to 5 millionaire. So, Jamal, you were, and make sure that I'm saying this correctly, you 21, 22 when you became a millionaire. No, I started the police department at 22, but I became a millionaire at 26. 26? So a little, a little, is, a little bit I mean, I mean, Jamal, I mean, I mean, you know, like 26. <laughs> yeah, 26, My bad, bro. in your 20s, right? And, yep. you know, they told us that in December, that is the month when most people decide that I can't do this no more. Like, I literally can't go to this job anymore. When we look at the percentages of people who choose to give up their current situation to move into faith, yep. December is that month. And so what would you tell a person right now who may be working nine to five and they're yep. thinking to themselves, God, I know you got something bigger for me. Of course, it's been sensationalized on Instagram and Facebook. Of course, a lot of people are using images to kind of entice you to be an entrepreneur. However, yep. we know that that is an uphill battle and a lot of times you're working harder than you would in your job. But what made you stay on the police force in Chicago at age 26? You're a millionaire. Why did you flip them the bird and keep moving? Yeah, bro. So the way I look at things, and this is what I need everybody to understand. My job or your job is nothing more than a vehicle to get you to your destination. So, you know, I got a four car garage and in the garage. I got my car that I take out. You know, when me and my wife want to go somewhere, you know, we want to dress up. We want to, you know, let the top down. I got that kind of car in there. I got another car in there, a truck, where when it's wintertime and it's snow outside and I want to just navigate through the city in. Yeah. And then I got another car, bro. This is my hoopty. Actually, <laughs> I drive a hoopty more than I drive anything else. Bro. Me too. I just hopped out the hoopty. The oh, hoopty kick a little bit. The hoopty oh, kick. No. But let me tell you about the hoopty. The hoopty is the type of vehicle 
that you don't even care how you looking. You know what I'm saying? You go to Home Depot and you just go throw whatever in there. You know, you could go in there, drywall, just whatever it is. That's your hoopie. But that hoopie is probably the most dependable car. That's the car that you put the most miles on. In that same way, the police department was nothing more than my hoopie. So just because I went and bought my, just because I got my fresh Cadillac Escalade in the garage or I got my convertible in the garage, don't mean that you get rid of your hoopie. So my yeah. job was that my hoopty just happens to be a Toyota Camry, right? So that Toyota yeah. Camry, you know, if you know anything about a Toyota Camry, it starts every single time. Every I time. ain't never, bro, I had my BMW cut off on me several times. 750 LI, yes. don't know why. Yes. But my Camry, my Camry Listen. always starts up, bro. Always, it, my Suburban, it always starts up. All the other cars have been in somebody's shop. The Suburban just <laughs> sitting up there like, I'm ready to run when you're ready to run. Look, oh. look, so for my pseudo-sophisticated people who may not understand what a hoopty is, that's kind of your car that you don't really... So let me explain my hoopty, you explain your hoopty, because we got a lot of pseudo-sophisticated people here, ain't from the neighborhood, never had an opportunity to hang out in the neighborhood. So Sir Mix a lot um, had a song called My Hoopty, Rolling, Tailpipe, Dragging, See No Work, Cause the <laughs> that, that, So it's a song about that hoopty, yeah. It's like the car that you don't really, really care about, but mine got sentimental value. Like, mm -hmm. I brought all my stuff down to Atlanta when it wasn't a hoopty, and I just love my car. So everybody tell me, why don't you trade it? It's ticking, it's shaking. I'm like, I feel yeah. like I'm still grinding in the mud when I'm in my hoopty. Yeah, you yeah, you I mean? just feel, you feel comfortable in your hoopty, right? Yeah, and the yeah. thing about it, my hoopty, and I, I'm relating this to my job, the police department was my hoopty. Wow. The police department was my hoopty. That's why I had my life insurance. That's why I had my, my medical insurance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was getting that check every two weeks. And just because right. I was a millionaire don't mean that I need to get rid of my hoopty. Matter of fact, one, no, my goal was to have a whole car full of nothing. I mean, a garage full of nothing but different vehicles. And then the vehicles is just not cars, right? I got, so, so the police department was my Toyota Camry. And then when I got started in real estate and became a million at the age of 26, that was my Cadillac Escalade. It was pretty. It was like, oh, I'm sitting high here now. I feel different yeah. in that car. And then all of a sudden, we went ahead and, boom, took money from real estate and put it into the daycare centers. Boom, that was like, you know, riding first class on an yeah. airplane. And then all yeah. of a sudden, security companies speaking, things like that. You know, now I'm in a rocket ship. So there's <laughs> nothing wrong with, happening, with having different vehicles to get you to your destination. But the problem is, most people they get so disgruntled or they instantly feel like they need to get rid of their vehicle, you know, because they've made their vehicle the destination. You talk to people all the time. That's why people lose their identity. I ain't never lost my identity when I was a police officer. I think I might have been the only multi-million millionaire police officer in the country because it wasn't nothing more than a vehicle. It was nothing. So I would leave work, bro, in my full uniform. I would leave work as a police officer in my uniform and then pull up to my 18,000 square foot house. Wow. I ain't see nothing wrong with it, bro. I ain't see nothing wrong because it was nothing more than it. The same way how you don't see nothing wrong with pulling up to your house in your hoopty, right? You pull up to your hoopty with pride. I was, exactly. up, I was pulling up to my 18,000 square foot mansion with pride wearing my uniform. That's why I was like, man, you don't have to quit. People use their job as an excuse. Some people say, man, I can't start my business. I can't do this. I can't do that, you know, because I got a job. That's a lie. And I stayed as a cop just to show other people. Not only did I do it once or twice, I did it five times over. I got five multi-million dollar businesses all while staying as a police officer. Listen, if you're just tuning in, this is my brother, Jamal King, nine to five millionaire. You know, I started looking at the numbers and I started to see people hitting me in my inbox. You know, we started a master class on how to create content because we started in the basement and we've been able to grow our business to be able to be sufficient in all areas of our life. So a lot of people are logging on, getting the master class. And I started noticing when people start to get traction, the first thing they want to do is to let go of the opportunity that they're in. And so similar to you, you know, I hadn't become, become a millionaire, but I started to make a substantial amount of money online through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And when I got this radio opportunity, you know, a lot of people have a job and, they so, and they're so negative towards their job. And so I come in with this jipper attitude and this great attitude. They're like, oh, yeah, you act that way because, you know, you got a little money and you got a, you know, you got a freedom. This isn't your end all be all. I said, no, 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 that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. If I come here, I have to add value to people because I have a company that I hope that there's not a break room conversation about what I need you to do in my company. 
So mm. I have to serve this company with all of my heart, with all of mm. my mind and my spirit. I give it to them. And I go out here and give it to them 120% because I know I got to hire 400 people for the vision that the Lord put on the inside of me. And so wow. the people who are looking right now at the lunchtime link up, if you're still going to work, if you're supposed to be there virtually, put on your clothes and give 140%, 150%. You know why? Everything. Because although they can't see you with your camera off, our Lord and Savior sees all. Because he sits high and he looks low. I don't do this mm. unto man. I do this unto God. And mm. so this is what I'm trying to let you know. So so were you, were you and so excuse my French to my pseudo sophisticated <laughs> saints, but Jamal, we got to keep it 100. Were you a half-assed police officer just because you were a millionaire or did you give it, oh. your, give it to you 100%? I was the one that they called when, when, when stuff needs to be taken care of. Let's just say I that. know it. So to think about it, the, the, go ahead. Really, think about it. You can't switch. You, it's not it, energy. It's not a switch that you could just put on and put off, man. When you got energy, bro, real energy, that energy mm -hmm. shows no matter what you do, no matter what you're doing in life. That energy, it, 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 it's so strong, bro, that it just bursts out, you know? Let your light so shine before man so that they may glorify your father, which is in heaven. So I let my light mm -hmm. shine in everything I do, you know? So no. you talk about that 120, that 130, that 150, bro, that 1,000%. That That's what yeah. I have to do every time I get an opportunity, bro. So no. Nah, yeah. Yeah, hanging out with Jamal King. If you're just tuning in, this is my brother. He is a real estate guru. He, of course, that was his base, but he also owns daycares. Uh, he's a, a, a speaker. He, he connects with Dr. Eric Thomas. He's in the inner circle there. And then, of course, many of you all have already picked up his real estate course. But now we've embarked upon something new, bro. Now, with this good <laughs> Chicago education that you have, you and I were both jocks. Uh-huh. Now you have a book. A book, bro. <laughs> a whole book. Oh, uh, this now, ain't no fluff either, bro. Because <laughs> somebody had told you in the seventh grade that Jamal King was going to add author to his repertoire. What would you have said? Bro, the seventh grade? How about if somebody would have told me this about four years ago? <laughs> <laughs> She's talking about seventh grade. <laughs> bro, I would have just said, man, I, I bro. First off, but my mindset, I would have still said everything, everything is possible. All things are possible. All things are you possible. You know, you got to be careful of the words you speak over your life, right? Yeah. So we just did a live at the release party, and my dad even said, he came on the live, and my dad said, you know, Jamal um, said, told me at five years old that he was going to be a millionaire, right? Yeah. My, my, my older sister, you know, he told my dad the same day. My dad had a camera. He told, my older sister told my dad, dad, I'm going to be a teacher when I grow up. And guess what she's doing today? She's a teacher. <laughs> My brother was next in line. He said, Dad, I'm going to be a cop just like you. My brother to this day right now is a police officer. A police officer. My little yeah. sister, she was four years old, Willie. She spoke it out. Her mom and said, Dad, I'm going to be a teacher just like my big sister. And guess what? She's a principal right now. That same day, that same minute, my dad asked me. He said, son, what you going to be when you grow up? And I said, Dad, I'm going to be a millionaire. And guess what? <laughs> guess what? The same day. Right now, I am a millionaire, so it's power in the tongue. And people don't really believe that, bro. They think that, you know, oh, man, that's, that's cap. That ain't real. No, bro. I spoke this into existence at a young age. At a young age, bro. And so that's why I tell people, man, be careful what you speak, bro. Because it just might come true. So, so hanging out with Jamal King, if you're just tuning in right now, I know a lot of people are dipping in and out, but don't leave. We've known, we now know that December is the month that many of you all are having these amazing ideas to step out on your own, but there may be an opportunity for you to not step out. It may be an opportunity for you to step down, right? Yeah. Like literally saying, okay, this is now what's going to fund my bigger vision, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm in right now. So literally this year, and I don't want to give too much because ultimately it's by Jamal, his book, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the film. I just want to give light to people who are doing good because I just believe great things are going to happen. But I decided this year that I would take one of the salaries that, that I get and I would fund my business. Like literally mm -hmm. take that just by faith and say, let's multiply it. Beginning yeah. of 2020, God told me that this was the year of multiplication. Jamal, Absolutely. so you remember we about to close on we were about to close on a real estate deal in Chicago. It didn't work out for yep. me. Mm -hmm. I said, and, and so, but I showed God that I was willing to spend more money than I, I called you the day before the close. And I'm like, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> like, hey, Jamal, I ain't never spent that much money in one day in my life. Oh. And he was like, man, it's in the bricks, bro. Because to those of you who are watching, so if Jamal talks to you, 
And you on the phone, I don't know why, but when I talk to him on the phone, I always get really teary eyed. I'm like, you right, man. <laughs> Right, I'm, I tend to be a tough guy from St. Louis. I'm like, you right, Jamal. I say, I say yes. The deal doesn't go through, but I feel like the Lord was saying, okay, I trust you. Mm. You'll do what you said you were going to do. Mm. And so literally, Jamal, I took that money and I produced the whole film with that money. So it's still, it's still in bricks. I didn't go put that money in a car. I didn't go put that money in, in something that is not going to produce. And so I took what you said and I said, okay, well, God, Maybe we produce something that multiplies since it's the year of multiplication. And yeah. when I come back to the table with the nine to five millionaire, I can play ball a little differently. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I thank God for that. So, so the Missing Peace film, the Missing Peace movie, is a documentary that's going to bring light to adoption, bro. Um, a lot of churches have been buying out virtual theaters. It's just been amazing. Um, I called one of my pastor buddies, um, Mike Todd. And he said, what's the biggest theater that I can buy out virtually? So we're kind of saying you got the IMAX, you got the, um, you got the IMAX, you got the drive through theater. So we kind of did a really great marketing thing with, with all of our, our, our bigger donors. And yeah. he said, he said well, well, what's the one? I told him, well, it's, it's this amount. He said, I'll double it. Because he's Ooh. living in the overflow, right? Oh, I love, I love and my he time showed too, me bro. what multiplication okay. looks like. Yeah. He was like, so what's the number? All right, cool. We're gonna double it, and it's all good. We'll call, boop, boop, boop. and it was. It, it, he didn't even think about it twice, and that's why it is so important that people understand that this is the year of multiplication, which brings me to your book. You've now done something that Jesus did. Mm. You put the information in a book. Wow! Wow! You put it in a book. Mm. I can't even begin to tell you how your life is about to multiply. If you think you did something before now. The doors that are about to open up next are literally going to blow your mind. And you're not easily excited because you've seen no. it all. Bro, but as you sure as my got name is Jr. <laughs> like, literally, the surest my name is Willie Moore Jr. With the sacrifice of you putting it in a book, that's a different ball game that you're about to play in. That's a totally different ball game. Put some hearts on this thing if you feel the spirit of God on this live real quick. I just want to see some hearts. If you feel it, hit me with a thumbs up real quick because I feel the spirit of the Lord. Tell me about the book. Tell me about the book a little bit as they as they keep putting their hearts up. Man, bro, you just hit it, man. Let me tell you something, bro. When you just got through speaking that word, bro, all I heard was write the vision and make it plain. So that those they that might read it may run with it. Yeah. That's exactly what this is. This is the blueprint for you. To, to use your job before they use you so that you can create a destination for your life and then take the information, the blueprint that's outlined in here and you could run with it. Yeah. You see, when I was doing it, bro, I was walking fast, right? I was, <laughs> I was actually walking like, I was, I was stutter stepping because nobody before me laid the foundation, laid the blueprint for me. Yeah. I didn't have a blueprint to follow. So then when I created this, I documented my life. Like, I knew that I was doing something special. When I started seeing that not everybody was 20, you know, six years old and was a millionaire, not everybody 26 years old had a building for every bill. See, when you was talking about that, what you were just talking about a second ago, I bought a building for every single bill, meaning that I said, my house, I wanted to look like this, my cars, I want to retire my wife, you know, the second we get married, which I've done my wife since the age of 24 has never worked a job. Um, my, I wanted to send my kids to private school. Pause, wait a so, minute, pause real quick, pause real quick. That was too much. We gotta digest that. My <laughs> wife has never my wife has never worked a job. Let's just pause right there. I just felt like the ladies needed like, did he just girl, did he just say? You know, my audience is 73% ladies. So so I just oh, gotta pause right here on, and just say, ladies, there's a man who's literally what up, Q Quissy's in. I Q. there's a man right now who had a desire to make yeah. sure that his wife didn't have to work outside of the family business. Continue, bro. Yeah, and the reason why my wife why I said that she never had to work a job is not because she's not capable. It's not because she's not talented or smart. You know, it's because she was too important to the kingdom. She was too important to what we got going on over here. If my wife ain't right, ain't nothing in this house right. So I need to make sure that she's that missing piece. So I need to make sure that she was all good. And so, you know, um, I bought a building for every single thing in life that we wanted. You know, most people live really according to what their income level is from their job. So I was like, why? You know, when I looked at my community back in the day, I'm like, man, everybody living in the same house, driving the same car, kids go to the same school. 
They're not going to that school because it's the best school. They're going to that school because that's what they can afford, because that's what the jobs all pay. You know, they're not going, they're not living in this community because this is just the best community. They're like, oh, I, I really want to stay here. They're living in this community because that's what they can all afford. So then I was like, all right, cool. So how can I still keep my job, but yet live in a different community? All right, cool, real estate. So then I started to buy, I had my wife. Man, look at this, this is what you call vision. I had me and my wife, we sat down together and we created the vision. Like, where do we want to live? I, I mean, I walked my wife around some mansions, right? And I'm talking about, as a matter of fact, I walked past the mansion that we live in today. And I did this over 20 years ago. We wait walked down. Did you say, wait a minute, did you I say walked, I walked my, past the mansion that I, okay. The I'm mansion that we live tomorrow. in today. I'm sweating. I don't even want to today, sweat bro. under my, I don't sweat under my arms <laughs> Bruh, we, we was hand in hand and we walked past, we walked up and down the street, bro, when we couldn't even afford, we was making $36,000 a year. And I held my wife's hand. And matter of fact, I was driving that same Toyota Camry and I was, I had my wife and I had to put her hands on the steering wheel. And I said, man, how do you like this brand new Cadillac Escalade? And I was like, and she's like, boy, quit playing. We in a Toyota Camry, is used. It was a hand-me-down. I'm like, no, nah, we got to see it, baby. I said, we got to see it here before we can see it here. We got to see it here before we see it here. I was like, how do you like it? And then she was just like, man, this is, this is, this. she started going along with me. And I'm like, baby, how does it feel? How does it, I said, turn on your heat, your seat warmers. It was cold outside too. I said, turn on your seat warmers. It wasn't no real seat warmer on the car, but I, I was just visualizing it. And then we got out the car and we used to walk in neighborhoods. Matter of fact, we walked down Pres President Obama's house where he, he lives, five, President Obama lived probably less than five minutes, probably about four minutes from my house. And we walked right by his house. We walked by all of these different houses and then this house that we live in here today, we walked past this one. I was like, man, can you imagine living in that house? And at the time, that house, this house was only 10,000 square feet. We added another 8,600 square feet to it. But, bro, during that time, we spoke it in existence, bro. We used to put our hands on bricks and claim it. Bro, I'm not lying to you. I can't make this stuff up. We used to claim stuff back when we didn't have. And now we are living in every single thing that we imagined, everything we spoke. We now have it, and it's multiplied 10 times more. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's something that people are missing. And people are just doing things. You get caught up in your job. You don't really believe. You just get caught up, and you start living according to what your job said that you can afford to live. There's a whole other life waiting on you. It's a yeah. whole other life waiting on you. I'm living proof of it. That's all I want my life to be about. I want to be, I'm, that's, why, I, that's why it's the nine to five millionaire. That's why I'm blue collar. Because I want people to understand. I want people to see that blue-collar people, the government say you essential, right? They don't, the government don't even, the world, America don't care nothing about blue-collar people until the damn pandemic happened. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, when the pandemic happened, now they want to call you essential. But I'm sitting here telling everybody on here, man, you've been essential. Your family is essential. You have to do this for those that come. I'm all about generational wealth. I'm doing this <coughs> not just for me. I'm not doing this just for my family. I'm doing this for y'all. I'm doing this. I went and stayed as a blue-collar worker and came out the pits of hell to come and tell you guys that you can do it too. And then I created the blueprint and I brought the blueprint to you. And I'm telling you, man, it's real, bro. Nine to five millionaire, Jamal King. Family, I want y'all to make sure you follow him. I'm not bringing, on, I'm not bringing people on my lunchtime link up for clout. I'm not bringing people on my lunchtime link up just to be cool and good. I just believe this, December is the month where you've been thinking about, I'm about to step out on faith. And I wanted to show you faith today. Jamal, between you and I, we had some pitch meetings with some of these amazing streaming companies. Yeah. They think the adoption idea is really, really good. But is there a real audience for it? Well, you know, we'll give them a certain number and maybe we'll see. I don't do maybe we'll see. I got my own money. I can shoot it myself. Mm. And so that's the position that I want everybody in here to know that God has given us wisdom now. Mm -hmm. Like we have the ideas. And it's people like Jamal who's leaving it in the book. And success is always gonna leave you some form of clues, always. right? And so I want y'all to pick up his book so you can make sure you get the clues you need so you can start to build out instead of just building on the inside. My 401k, my every two weeks, my 30, you don't have to live that way. We right. now give you permission. I feel this in my spirit now, and I don't want to go too deep on the lunchtime. I want you crying at work, but you still <laughs> got to go to work. You got to work 120%. <laughs> but you have permission. You have permission to be successful. Ooh. You have permission 
to go be the head and not the tail. You have permission to be the lender and not the borrower. You have permission to go out there and be exactly who God called you to be. And you don't have to cut corners. You don't have to burn bridges. And you can keep no. your integrity in the midst of you doing it. Right? Okay. There's people right here on the live right now. Shout out to my brother Quincy Harris. He tapped in. Shout out to Philly. Shout out to all my people at Radio 1 who decided to tap in. I told people to make sure you check out my brother Jamal King. Listen, this is not a coincidence. I wanted you to hear this. Hear us converse. Just brothers being brothers. This is how we talk That's on it. the phone. This ain't this All ain't this ain't cap. So if we on the phone for an hour, this is what it sounds like. Hell, I'm crying a little bit. It's a tug, it's a tug of cry, right? <sighs> I want you to support. I want you to support his book. I want you to support the missing piece movie. And I want you to make sure that you sow your seed into it. This ain't because because cats are already doing okay, so it ain't like to to to, to become a millionaire, right? <laughs> it's to make sure that you get the information so you can go yeah. out there and duplicate it in your own way. Jamal, I really do honor and appreciate you for tap tapping in. I know your life is busy. Thank you for tapping in at such a uh, short notice. Uh, Jamal, make sure you get your tickets to the Missing Peace movie. I want you to put it absolutely, in the bro. Room, and I want you I'm to um. Send me a uh, send me a picture of the theater room so I can put it in the promo for the. If January. it wasn't if, if it wasn't so far, bro, I would go down there right now. <laughs> bro, no, what I'm gonna do, bro? Any kind of way I can support, bro? If it's a theater man and you got some children, um, that 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 you want, bro, I want to definitely, I want to donate, I want to rent out the theater, whatever it is, bro. Mm -hmm. But I want you to, you know, I want it to be part of your thing, and yeah. I'll pay for. I want to sponsor some children, let them go, bro, because and I don't know, I don't even know if you know this, bro. I adopted my first son. I don't even I know if you knew. You, you probably did. It's in the book. That's right. It's in the book. See, no, I, I, even I, I got to go get the book. <laughs> Jamal, you yeah. I adopted, bro. I adopted my first son, bro. I adopted him at age. Montreal came in at age 13, 14 years old, man. He's my cousin. He's my birth cousin and my first cousin. She had a massive heart attack. And um, her, um, her, her, uh, it wasn't her husband, her, whatever, her baby daddy, he didn't yeah. want his son. And then so um, his my uh, son's next to Kim was only his great grandmother, and she had cancer at the time. And I knew I could help this young man out. And I went ahead, man, brought him in my home. You know, that's a, it's a whole story about it. But I brought him in, and I started training him. And at the time, he was just a big guy. And then I started. I literally took off of work for a year, man, and actually coached him in football. Got him up. And one year, he became one of the top football players in the country. And then he became. He ended up having over thirty to forty scholarship offers. He ended up being a number one player at, at the University of Illinois. Um, now he's coaching football at um, man, where is he at right now? I can't even think of the day. Law Liberty and yeah. Liberty just. Oh wow. Went yeah, he's a defensive line coach at Liberty. He's one of the most sought after football coaches. He's only twenty six years old. And I mean, my boy is killing it. And he's That's my son. He, he took on, yeah, he took on my, he took on my uh, last name and everything, bro. We adopted him at the age of like 13 or 14 years old, man. So I, I understand how, how, how that adoption, how that whole process changed this young man's life. You know, it's so much crime going on in the city of Chicago, just all over the country. And all it really takes is just one man, one person to just grab somebody. You know, as a police officer, you know, they taught us always, boom, have to be quick to put your handcuffs on somebody. They taught us quick, you know, be, man. And first thing they teach you in the academy, before they teach you how to do anything else, get your handcuffs and how to handcuff somebody. But see right. what I found out, bro, when you put handcuffs on somebody, that only lasts is for the time period when you actually locking that person up. But when you actually put your arm around somebody and cuff them in a different kind of way, that lasts forever, bro. That lasts forever. And that's what we got to start doing. So, man, I love what you're doing, bro. I appreciate what you're doing, man. Your story is phenomenal, bro. Just the whole thing about it. For all of y'all, I'm telling you, this man right here, he's, he's about that life, you know, and he's coming really? back and he's, he's teaching other people. He's not just saying, oh, I got adopted and my life turned out great. Look at me. No, he's saying, hey, guys, there's a Willie Mo out there that's in some adoption center right now. It's a Willie Mo, and he just needs you. You know, one thing, and we both know Pastor Hannah, you know, Pastor Hannah, my pastor here in Chicago, yeah. New Life Covenant, he always says, man, he always says, and he told me this and it stuck with me. Pastor Hannah always said, one man's obedience is connected to so many other people's destiny. One man's obedience is connected to so many other people's destiny. And so I always say, you know, who's waiting on you? Who's waiting on your obedience? Who's destiny? Is waiting on your obedience. So, man, that's all I got to yeah, say, yeah. bro. You can go to 9to5millionaire.com. That's where you can get the book, the audio book. And the audio book is me speaking for eight hours. 
It's, it's passionate. It's going to make you cry, get some tissue, and all of that. <laughs> Nine to five millionaire.com. So look, Jamal, send me the link. I'm going to put it in my Insta story. So I'm going to make it real easy for you. As you come back and watch the replay, it's going to be in my Insta story. All you got to do is swipe up and you can get that nine to five millionaire book. Jamal, we honor you, bro. Thank you so much for being a part of the lunchtime link up, my friend. Man, brother, man, love you, man. Dog, I can't wait to put hands on you again, my brother, man. Man! man I said hi, bro. Let's keep going, man. And now I got to go get on Radio Tyria. Oh, no, you already know, man. I'm like, you already know. <laughs> I'm like, just in case you didn't know, really want you. You've been crying today. So I love you, man. Have an amazing day. I love, I love you too, brother, man. Uh, hey, y'all be good, man. Let's go, man. Let's go take over the world, baby. Let's go again.